Okay. So, we are going to discuss maxima and minima applications. So, as you can see in the graph, so, we have here a graph of the function y is equal to function of x. So, we have here maximum and minimum points. When you say maximum and minimum points, uh, letter B, point B, that is a maximum point with respect to its neighboring points. So, we can have in one function, we can have different maximum and minimum points. That depends on its neighboring points. So, for letter D, that is a minimum point of this function with regards to its neighboring points. So, as x in increases, the curve rises. So, the curve rises. So, if the curve rises, the slope is positive as of arc AB. So, if you are going to look at here, arc, the arc AB, the slope here is positive because that is going up. It is going down the arc BC. The slope here is negative because that is going down. At point B, we're in this point. This is the maximum point for this function. The slope here is zero because this is a horizontal the slope here. Rise over run, that is zero. So, we will continue. So, we have here, relative maximum and minimum points. Okay. So, we can see here, at point B, the point is said to have a maximum value. And the point is called the maximum point relative to its adjacent points. At point D, the point is minimum point relative to its adjacent points. So, okay, we will continue. <clears throat> At maximum or minimum points, the tangent is horizontal or the slope is zero. So, therefore, dy over dx is equal to zero. So, for example, we have a slope here. Okay, this one. This is a maximum point. Maximum point relative to its neighboring points. So, that is maximum points. With respect to its neighboring points. So, neighboring points here that is going down. The other one is going down. So, if you are going to look at this point. If you are going to look at this point. That is the maximum point with regards to its neighboring points. So, for this case. At the maximum point. The tangent here. That is horizontal. Because tangent that is rise over run. So, therefore. The slope here is zero because slope that is rise over run. So therefore, the first derivative of that one that is equal to zero. dy over dx is equal to zero. The points at which dy over dx is equal to zero are called critical points. Okay. And the corresponding value of x are critical values okay so let's try to continue so there is what we call points of 
inflection. What is a point of inflection? The point, a point of inflection is a point at which the curve changes from concave upward to concave downward or vice versa. So we have here, we have here an example at point E. So at point E, this is what we called as point of inflection because the curve here is the curve here is going this is going up this one's going down this at this portion at point e it's called point of inflection because it is a point at which the curve changes from concave upward to concave downward okay okay let's continue So, at the point of inflection, at point of inflection, the second derivative of y is 0. So, therefore, when you are going to find the second derivative, that is equal to 0. y double prime, that represents second derivative. If you will have y prime, that is first derivative. Okay. So, we have here the steps in solving maxima and minima problems. So what are the steps in solving maxima and minima problems? Number one, you are going to identify the constant. So identify what is constant in the given problem. Number two, identify the variable to be maximized or minimized. Number three, express this variable in terms of the other relevant variables. Okay, so number four, okay, number four, so number four, if the function shall consist of more than one variable expressed in terms of one variable. So for example, in the, in the function, you have, in your equation, you have x and y. So you are going to express y in terms of x so that you will have only one variable. Number five, differentiate and equate to zero. So that are the steps in solving maxima and minima problems. So we will have example. So we have an example here. A rectangular box with a square base and open top is to be made Find the volume of the largest box that can be made from 1,200 square meter of material. So we are going to look at here. A rectangular box with a square base and open top is to be made. Find the volume of the largest box that can be made from 1,200 square meter of material. So what is given in the problem? So... 1,200 square meter of material that is the material the 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 measurement of the material that can be made into a rectangular box with a square base so 1,200 that is your surface area so what you're going to do so what you're going to find for we are going to find the volume of the largest box so because you're, you're finding the volume of the largest box, so therefore maximum. So if you are going to find the volume of the largest box, so you are going to find the derivative of the volume. So that is one hint in what you're going to do. Because you, you are going to find the derivative of the volume. So take take note for that. So what we're going to do, we are going to draw the figure. So figure here. So we have the figure. A box, a rectangular box with a square base. So when you say square base, that is your base here, you have equal length. 
for your base because that is a square base. So we denote that one as our x and the height as y. So one formula that you must consider that is the volume of the box because you are going to find the largest box that can be made out of 1,200 square meter of material. So what is the formula of the volume of box? Formula of a volume, so any volume, the formula for that, that is area of the base times height. In For the case of our problem, area of the base, that is x square. So volume, that is equal to x square times the height, that is y. 1,200 given of material, that is what we call as the surface area. So surface area. So, surface area, that is area of the base, area of the four sides. So, we have here, surface area, surface area, that is area of the base plus area of four sides. We have only area of the base because open top, remember that one. So, formula, air, surface area, that is equal to area of the base plus area of four sides. So, what is... The equivalent of surface area. Surface area is equal to 1,200. Area of the base is x square. Area of four sides. Area of one side, that is x times y. x times y. But you have four sides for your box. So therefore, you will have four times x, y. So we have now all the necessary formula. So, we are going to proceed. <clears throat> so, area, surface area, that is equal to x square plus 4xy, area of the base, plus 4 sides. One side is xy times 4. So, therefore, you will have 1,200, that is equal to x square plus 4xy. If we are going to solve for y in terms of x, so therefore you will have y in terms of x, so that we will have only one variable here. So we will have 1,200 transpose x squared, so that becomes negative, negative x squared over 4x. From here, so we have the formula of the volume, volume of the box that would be equal to x squared times y. We're in substitute the value of y because we are going to substitute the value of y, express y in terms of x. So we have here y is equal to 1200 minus x squared over 4x. Then multiply this inside, volume, that is equal to x squared divided by x. So you will have x over 4 times 1,200 minus x squared. So multiply x inside, so you will have 1,200x minus x cubed. Okay, so from that, because we are going to find the largest volume of the box. So therefore, we are going to find the derivative of the volume. So we have here, derivative of the volume dv dx. That is equal to d dx, one-fourth times 1,200x minus x cubed. So therefore, we will have... 1 fourth, okay, derivative of 1,200x, that would become 1,200, derivative of x cubed, that is 3x squared, okay, dv dx, okay. So, at maximum and minimum points, your first derivative is equal to 0. So, therefore, set dv dx equal to 0. So, from that, you will have 0, okay, 
zero is equal to one fourth times one thousand two hundred minus three x squared. Okay, so this is zero. If you are going to cross multiply four with zero, so that would become zero. So therefore, we will have, okay, let's continue. So we will have zero that is equal to 1,200 minus 3x square because we multiply 4 with 0. So therefore, you can transpose 3x squared to the other side. That would become positive. 3x squared is equal to 1,200x squared. That is equal to 1,200 divided by 3. So therefore, 1,000 200 divided by 3, that would be equal to x squared, that is equal to 400. Then, the square root of 400, that is equal to 20. Okay. So, therefore, if we have solved x is equal to 20, we can then solve for the value of y. So, formula for y. So, we have 1,200 minus 400 divided by 4 times 20. Okay. Where do I get that formula? So, that is from, okay, from y is equal to 1,200 minus x squared divided by 4x. So, that's the reason you have 400 here because x squared, so 20 squared, so you will have 400. Okay. So, therefore, you will have y here that would become 10 okay so we have now the value of x is equal to 20 y is equal to 10 so unit here because that is in square meter kanina so this is in 20 meters and here is 10 meters so if we are going to solve for the volume the largest volume so, that would be equal to, okay, so volume will be equal to, formula of volume, volume is equal to x square times y. So, volume that is equal to 20 square times 10. So, volume that is equal to 4,000 cubic meter because you will have here square for meter, meter square times 10 meters, so you will have cubic meters. So therefore, the largest volume that can be made from 1,200 square meter of material is equal to 4,000 meter cube. Okay. Thank you.